If I say the word Bucky's to you, does that conjure anything? I'm thinking no from no. that face. No. So Bucky's is apparently, well, it is a chain of like behemoth convenience stores based out of Texas. And they just what? opened their first location in Colorado, which is, I think, currently tied for the world's largest convenience store. Um, behemoth. Can, behemoth. Literally, this, like, a friend of mine yesterday and I had really no Easter plans, so we decided to go because their slogan is always open. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait so a minute. We wait, like, wait, wait, Tara, I, 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 I want to I get this straight. You had no plans for Easter. So for an outing, you went to the convenience store. You don't understand <laughs> this place. First of all, the one in Colorado is about the size of a Costco. <laughs> what? How? Yeah, literally over literally over a hundred gas pumps. Okay, but that doesn't say convenient to me. That stops being convenient. Well, they do. I guess they're known for their fresh barbecue, and we did get the brisket sandwiches, which were very tasty. Mm. Um, they have. They're also known for having an entire wall of jerky. They have a sign above their bathrooms that say "World Famous" because one of the other things they're known for is their extremely clean bathrooms, I suppose. But also, just like I should send you the video I made, the random stuff you can buy, like horsehair placemats. If you ever wanted to eat a meal off of horsehair, I've never wanted to do that, but you could, I learned. Uh, awful lot of Jesus merch and a lot of branded merch. So I got, I got me a Bucky the Beaver. I got my picture with the beaver. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I'll send you the video I made so you can you can experience it. So folks, tonight I don't know what it was about the stars aligning. And yes, we are making this on April Fool's Day. It has nothing to do with it. I, I don't know what happened here. There are weeks that frustrate me. There are weeks that irritate me. There are weeks that disgust me on this show. But sometimes there are weeks where whatever is left of my inner 10 year old. Uh oh. That's that is this week. This is the, the dude, Tara, do you believe in magic? Yes. There you go. Okay. That's that's this week for me. I'm I'm very happy with 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 the selection of stories that came to us because everything cool. is kind of just fucking what's it the kids say these days they be wild and yo <laughs> that's let's get the intro going each week Catherine the radio dead air audience go on the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff bring you back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? And Tara, this this crazy one is like this. This first story is like catnip for me. I, I just it's this this is put it right in my veins because this is one of those confluences of reality that just it's like you know maybe it's not so bad being alive. Um, rival monkey gangs. Declare war on streets of Thailand as authorities arrest leaders. I want to stress that police in Thailand are arresting the monkeys. They are putting monkeys in monkey jail. Or maybe they're putting it in people jail. I didn't clarify here. They're, 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 it's, Are monkeys aware of laws? I don't know, but but it, it's this is great. Um, 
I don't feel like that's fair. <laughs> in Thailand, a significant escalation. You can't read the monkey's rights. You need, the monkey needs a lawyer. <laughs> in Thailand, a significant escalation has occurred involving conflicts between rival monkey factions, leading to significant disruptions. To mitigate the situation, officials have engaged successfully capturing a key figure among the monkeys. And I want to stress, this did not come out on April. This is this is like three or four days ago. And the, the whole, key figure has a name. I crow. I think that's how you say it. Maybe, but it's like we, we got we we've got like a fucking Bugsy. We got a fucking Bugsy Seagal of the fucking monkeys. The next sentence. Despite these efforts. The challenges persist due to the monkey's adeptness with firearms and understanding of human cues. I just, well, I just want to emphasize more time that the monkeys are showing proficiency with guns. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's, it's a monkey see, monkey do. Is that a monkey? He's got a gun. Blam, blam. Yes, and we know that we know the, the bit. The bit. Proficiency. Yeah. Like, well, monkey see, monkey shoot a fucking gun it's it's they're not dumb they're little monsters but they're not dumb i just i love the fact that the monkeys with no regard for the fucking humans are like okay yeah yeah you built all this shit you think you're hot shit great we've got a problem with each other we're gonna fucking settle it y'all better stay the fuck back or we will shoot you kind of like the avengers <laughs> It's like they have, to, they have a, like a chart of their arrest. Tara, they're putting rock monkeys under arrest. I love it. I'm so happy. I really thought it would be climate change that would get us. <laughs> Not the monkeys. They don't. They don't. They don't list a date when he's going to be arraigned. So I guess we have to follow up on this one. What are the odds? That this is a giant viral marketing stunt for that awesome looking Dev Patel movie. It could be. It could be. But at the same time, I love it. I'm so they arrested. Him. I mean, it would be genius they on Dev Patel's part. They arrested the monkeys. I don't. Do you cuff a monkey? I do know. I don't know. Are they in jail with the other peep with people? Guard! Guard! This inmate keeps throwing his poop at me! Guard! A citywide monkey hunt is underway to capture the remaining leaders. <laughs> Round up the usual suspects. This isn't this isn't an April Fool's Day thing? I don't no, I don't think so. No, it's March 20th. Yeah, yeah. Magic. I told you, but wait, there's more. Um, so, uh, this comes from the, uh, like that's our opener. That's our opener. Oh yeah. Um, have you ever sat around the house? You got your day off. You're waiting for a FedEx package. Just waiting for it. Just waiting around like, damn, is it ever going to get here? And then. Be careful what you fucking wish for. Suspected drunk and high FedEx driver arrested after crashing truck into house. Suspected. This is from Louisiana. A delivery driver in Louisiana is accused of driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol after being involved in a neighborhood crash earlier this week. Uh, Homa Police Department said the uh, driver is behind the wheel of a FedEx truck when it crashed into a home. There are people inside, but no injuries reported. According to police, the truck veered off the roadway and crashed into the front of the home. <laughs> There's a FedEx truck in the house, said the homeowner's niece, Sofia Ramirez. Why would this happen in real life? <laughs> uh, driver of the truck, 31-year-old Michael Smith, failed a sobriety test. Authorities found Smith in possession of an alcoholic open open alcoholic beverage, marijuana, and tramadol, a reported opium, opioid pain relief medicine. Uh, 
Smith was taken into custody after refusing to get into a patrol car and failing to cooperate with officers. You, you seem to think that after you've driven the FedEx truck into a house, you would be a little more chill about law enforcement at that particular moment, not being like, no, 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 no. You can't arrest me. Why? Reasons. I don't have to do I got packages to deliver. Got packages to deliver. You can you're 24 you're, hours. You're you're interfering with the mail with, with the post office. You're not the post office. We're interfering with the mail. No. Actually, technically, some mail US Postal Service does go through FedEx and then back out. They they trade off sometimes. So yeah, this guy's double fucked. This guy's double fucked. Wait. The, the, the audacity to crash the fucking truck through someone's house and then try to argue about it. <laughs> Who pays for their house? FedEx. FedEx, FedEx Kobe Bay. Well, and here's 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 a related question because I had a relative who used to own a fleet of FedEx trucks. Mm -hmm. So is it FedEx or is this truck operating under like a franchisee who owns a fleet of trucks? Whichever it is right now in Louisiana, there are like, there's like a circle, like, like you, you know, it's concentric wing, rings they put out to show you the, the like how the yeah. damage from a nuclear blast. All right. Imagine that, but that's for the range that's making lawyers salivate around this house. Cause they're, they don't even know why it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's like Pavlovian. They don't know why it's happening, but and the, the, the name of the, the guy's so not lucky to have this name, Michael Smith. Cause you Google that shit. You're going to find all kinds. He's you know that's lucky ass name to have. If you're going to do some stupid shit like this, you know, it's funny. Huh? Cause I was a teenage Catholic youth group member. Mm hmm. There is a popular Christian pop artist named Michael W. Smith. He played John McCain's funeral. Why do I know that? I don't know. But back in my high school youth group days, he was very popular among the young Christian set. Well, so all I'm saying is if this guy's middle name is like Walter, he is fucking yeah. up some dude's life. Yeah, well, you, you get all free and clear you have a name like that. They can't Google you. You're you're fine. Yeah. All right. This next one. Michael this... W. Smith as in a place in this world. Same guy. He had one crossover hit and that was it. Somebody's going to request it now. <laughs> so not only is this guy an incredible dipshit, but he does not look like you would imagine someone who did this would look. But then you think about it and he looks exactly like someone. Um, Scarface Cinema Room helped identify Liverpool drug dealer. Uh, so a drug Does dealer. Does every college freshman dude still have a Scarface poster in his dorm? Maybe. I didn't. Is that still a thing? I did not. I had. Because when I was in college, like every freshman dude had a fucking Scarface poster for I don't know why. I had James Dean and I had that picture of the truck of the, the, the train falling off the station from like the, the old black and white picture. Those are those the ones I had. I didn't have did not have Scarface. Um, a drug dealer who tried to buy submachine guns was identified partly due to his Scarface theme home cinema. Paul Sutton used the EncroChat encrypted phone network to traffic cocaine, crack, and cannabis in 2020. Sutton from uh, Fazakerly, wow, I said it, wow, Fazakerly in Liverpool, was arrested in his caravan in Devon by National Crime Agency. The 40-year-old was jailed for 12 weeks and six months. Sutton, who was using the handle Nutty Rose, was unaware that detectives could read his messages after the Encro chat network was hacked by French police. Those messages showed that Nutty Rose had attempted to buy guns, including Uzi and Tech 9 submachine guns with a silencer. Now, this is why I said he, he does not look like you expect 
And yet he looks exactly like you would expect. Weirdly. I don't know if you've watched the Netflix series, The Gentleman. Hmm. Paul Serafinowicz is in it. Yes. Yes. And it took me a while to recognize Paul Serafinowicz because they make him look like bloated crap. <laughs> they make him look like this guy. It's it's mostly the hair. And when I for realized me. it was Paul Serafinowicz, I was shocked. That's like that that is such a that's such a dad haircut. That is a dad yeah. cut. Yeah. Like, that, like people and the joke. Patchy about, neck beard. People joke about the Karen thing. No, no, that that is a dad cut. That is that is like you're still. That is a man who wears socks with sandals. You are you are you see your thirties behind you, and you were just like, no, no. So the, uh, yeah, the the nutty also nutty Is it Peter Serafinowicz. Peter Serafinowicz. Did yes. I say Paul? It's Peter. Sorry, it's one of that the that guy. I've yeah. seen him in person. He's taller than you think. They were both apostles. Who cares? Um, information in chats of the credible revealed Nutty Rose's birthday match Suttons and he used his wife's name and birthday as his lock screen passcode. When Sutton's house was raided, officers found a secret cinema room accessible behind a mirror with cushions branded with the logo from the Al Pacino gangster film Scarface. Search also revealed two bags so, of high So you hid cocaine. your movie room. Yeah. You hid your movie room, mm -hmm. but not your drug deals. No. Well, he encrypted them, Tara. That's all he had to do. They were encrypted. There you go. Problem solved. Like, you put in the effort of putting a secret passage on the room where you watch DVDs. But then you used your wife's birthday as your passcode for the phone where you sold drugs. You'd think if you are going... The priorities, man. If you are going to be selling the cocaine, you might not want to associate yourself with Scarface. I don't, did you not watch to the end of the movie? Because it's, spoiler, it's got a twist. Mediocre white dudes fucking love Scarface. Fucking though, and I don't know why. Like, except for Michelle Pfeiffer and that killer haircut. I don't get it. But mediocre white dudes fucking love Scarface. Push it to the limit. Limit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Man, fucking Scarface and fucking Vice City back in the day. Plug the fucking GTA. That's those are those are just the big old flags. You know, yeah. you know the next Grand Theft Auto is they're, they're doing a modern Vice City. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah, they're doing Vice City again. Only instead of the '80s, it's in now. So. And they're go they're, and they're they're playing up all the Florida Man stuff for the game too because it's set in Vice City is supposedly the oh. Miami. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh it's, God. Yeah. They're gonna be alligators. It's gonna be a thing. Is everybody going to be naked and on meth? Yes, actually, in the, in the trailer, one guy actually is. He's in his underwear, but yes. Who asked for that? I feel like we should get rights on that. I feel like we should get rights. Right? Right, yeah. All right. Isn't there already a game that does that? You guys always said there was some game with a giant penis bat. Like, doesn't Florida Man the game That's already Saints, exist? That's Saints Row. And that one fights okay. the penis bat is for fighting aliens, so it's kind of different. Oh. Um, all right. So this obviously next, this next one, this is from uh Morgantown, North Carolina. And I I I when I saw this, I knew you were gonna have feelings about it. I I had probably an anecdote or two, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna have feelings about this story. Don't worry, it's not. Would you? I, it's not one of those weeks, Sarah. It's not one of those weeks. I'm holding my emotional support beaver. I all I know is you're gonna have feelings about and the 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 fucking mugshot. Just let's start with the mugshot. That's magical. Oh, firefighter impersonator impersonator with garden hose arrested after refusing to leave fire scene. A man impersonating a firefighter and trying to put out a fire with a garden hose 
was arrested after refusing to let firefighters do their job. Authorities say firefighters were called to a home around midnight Wednesday. When firefighters arrived, they said a neighbor was on the scene dressed in FDNY fire gear and trying to put out the fire with a garden hose. Morgan. FDNY fire gear in South Carolina. North Carolina, but close enough. Morgan well, the did... dateline says South. No, it's, no, it's North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay, my bad. Morganton firefighters began to put out the fire. However, they said the neighbor refused to leave or allow the firefighters to begin their work. Bro, were you calling dibs? How how does that work? Well, you see, the the the, the deal was he set the house on fire <laughs> because he liked the girl that lived there and he wanted to save her life because then she'd no. have to go out with him. Well, we can't. We can't. And you know what's sad? Deny that. Some of you were like, "That's plausible." <laughs> there are men who would do that shit. After multiple commands, law units responded and took Christopher Victor Mig Miglino, Miglino, there, 37, into custody. He was charged with resist delay, obstructing public officer, impersonating a firefighter, city ordinance violation, not receive a bond, and he's currently out on pretrial release. So he's also all like, like, here's the thing, though. If you yeah. had to call the fire department. Yeah. Uh, you guys know I'm the daughter of a fireman, which is I why Nash felt I might have some feelings about yep. this. The, like, a random dude doesn't just show up in his own car in his gear. The way it works, because, like, when I was a kid, my dad made us, like, memorize all the codes so that if he didn't hear his radio go off, one of us would go and tell him what the call was, and he figured out if he had to go. <laughs> Because <laughs> he didn't always hear it. It was in like the other end Child of the house. So, okay, sure. <laughs> you know, one of us would be like, Dad, it's a signal 13, which was a structure fire. And then he but but the thing is they they get they go to the firehouse and get suited up and then they carpool in this big cool red truck. A yeah, volunteer they firefighter. Don't all just like doesn't show mean, up on their own. Yeah, volunteer doesn't mean you just decide tonight, well, I want to be a firefighter tonight. I've got nothing going on. Did I ever have to do it all the time? If my dad didn't hear the radio, yeah, all the time. We'd be like, Dad, it's a signal whatever. It's a cat up a tree. It's a structure fire. It's a car accident, you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's It's a Thursday. Rick and Morty's in reruns. Oh. I might as well go help. I will say the one time <laughs> that my father went directly from home to a fire was the house across the street from us literally burned down when I was like three or four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's... he was first on scene and just like they brought his gear to him. <laughs> Yeah, but because he was there helping our neighbors get the hell out of the house. His gear did not include a garden hose, Tara, did it? No, did not include a garden hose. And mm -hmm. when he wore FDNY, he was actually in New York. Yeah, because he well, was he wore York CIFD, which was Centralized Slip Fire Department. Right. But yes, he was he was in Centralized Slip at the time. FDNY, it's like I have every time I watch certain movies, people think that like movie people seem to think New York just covers everything. Like whatever season of Jessica Jones involved her mom, the big climax ends up at Rye Playland and the NYPD shows up. <laughs> Rye Playland is in Westchester fucking county, an hour away from New York City. NYPD has no fucking jurisdiction there. <laughs> There's no reason they're showing up at the crime scene. It's like that. I People just, are just like, it's New York. They run everything, right? I, I love, I love that, that mug shot. I fucking love that mug shot. That what? is a smug looking asshole what? who what? really thinks he's rocking that Dean Winchester haircut and he's not. He's already out. You're already out on pretrial release and you're, you're pulling shit. What in the world is wrong with you? I mean, I guess... Yay, you were trying to help put out a fire. Well, yes, but that's true. Once the 
But once the actual firefighters show up with the hose that has pressure and stuff, you should get the fuck out of their way. At least he was trying to put it out. Also, I'll be honest, I still, my head cannon is he set the fire house on fire on purpose. So the girl would have to go out with him when he saved her. Well, this next one actually did set the house on fire, except they're a <laughs> landlord. Welcome to this week's edition of Fuck This Guy. Landlord accused of setting fire in Lancaster County apartment. Ronald Frisbee III is a name. It's actually spelled like that. Is a name. Ronald It's spelled Frisbee, exactly how you think. Ronald Frisbee III. That is a name. Three dudes are named that. <laughs> was unhappy with his tenants because they allegedly broke a washer and dryer. Frisbee was yeah, unhappy. That's a mugshot. Frisbee was unhappy with his uh, tenants. Yeah, there's the, there's the mugshot down there. Um, so he lit 28. A, what? 28? Yeah, it's a rough 28, yeah. Uh, Who's a fucking landlord at 28? Fuck you! <laughs> Trust fund piece of shit. They broke a washer and dryer, so he lit a cardboard box on fire inside their apartment at 2.45 a.m. Saturday. The apartment was filled with smoke, and the fire was extinguished by a witness. No one was hurt. So, number one, um, that's arson. Uh, number mm -hmm. two, you're bad at arson. Number three, you know what costs a whole lot more? than a washer dryer repair person arson but also you're mad that your tenants cause damage that's what tenants do that's... but your answer is your solution is to cause more damage to the property that you own yep. who do you think is going to be responsible for fixing this damage like, even if you didn't get caught, even if you're not going to prison, all you did was cost yourself more money. Right. But just, you, just, fuck you, guy. Fuck this guy. A washer and dryer, and he tries to burn their fucking house down. That he owns. There's not even logic here. Well, you see, it, it gets worse. Because he did this, it's quite possible that they can't live there anymore because he's right. going to jail. Right. So they have to find a new place to live. And I bet you anything, they're not getting their first and last back. Or the security deposit. So... Super fuck you. Super action kung fu grip fuck you. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Ronald Frisbee. The third. The third. Fuck you and your dad and your granddad. Bunch of tossers is what you are. See if people get that. Give them a second. Give them a second. Bunch of tossed? <laughs> They're tossers. Um, all right. This one, we have video. I am so happy. I am. This is, this is every 10 year old. If you're watching right now, your inner 10 year old is about to start bouncing up and down. You just are because this is. We all my inner 10 year old was really into the Statue of Liberty, so that's a high bar. Okay. Most of us dreamed of this day, and we've got video. Let me bring this up here. And I will give you the link because this was this was a good day, Tara. As the man once said, today was a good day. 
so what you're watching here, we're at the four, fast forward a little bit, is a dude, former employee, construction company, is stolen, hijacked a front loader. Eddie Sanchez was arrested and charged with criminal trespassing and reckless driving. So another employee got in a different front loader and they done did battle in front loaders. They had a front loader fight, Tara. They like jousted. This is like as close as you can get to driving a mech. All right. This is like, like as close as you're going to get to mech warrior. If they can flip it, flip it! They did, like, life-size battle bots. And the dude, f get life's literally life-size up because he flipped the thing over, and they caught him! They're having a chase! Yes, they this is just, yes! It's wonderful! Michael Bay is going to fuck up the movie version of this so bad. <laughs> when the one flips over, there's going to be an aerial shot going over a girl with big boobs who's going. <laughs> Georgia man was arrested after stealing a 75,000 pound front loader. Uh, police responded around 11 a.m. Saturday to waste management business on uh, Corley Road. Uh, police said Sanchez, a former employee, was riding the construction vehicle around the property. Um, the footage appears to show the officer calling the suspect to stop, but he was unsuccessful. The suspect continued driving, eventually leaving the property. Uh, he exited the property, continued on to other roads. Let's see, where's the rest of this? Uh, the rest of the story's missing. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me get the rest of the story. Just... There's a continue reading button. Where is it? There you are. There you are, you little little nugget. Um, other officers continue to pursue the suspect. When the initial responding officer returned the business to find another large construction vehicle heavy enough to stop the suspect, then an employee suggested using another front loader to track him down. So this is at this point, they're like, the only way to stop him is to fight him. Who was it in the chat? Jaycog, the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a front loader. There's a good guy, guy with a front, front loader. loader. <laughs> Police then escorted the employee in that front loader to the suspect, who at that point was already several miles away. So the cop held up traffic so the other front loader could catch up so they could fight. So the cops, the cops agreed to this. The cops agreed to this. This was a sanctioned front loader fight. This is amazing. Like they pitched this to the cops and the fucking cops were like, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. That sounds cool. That's the only solution. And it, it fucking worked. <laughs> I love that it fucking worked. I'm so happy. This is some 80s action movie cop shit. Yes, it is. And I, I fucking love this shit. They can only go 30 miles an hour. <laughs> you can just follow him until he stops somewhere. You could. But you could also get another It's going to be like that scene in Austin Powers <laughs> with the steamroller. <laughs> It's going to be a slow, boring chase, but you're going to win. But no, let's do battle bots on the street. God only knows how much fucking damage he did to that front loader. Knocking it the fuck over. And bring... that's, I mean, good luck when the owner of that construction company sues the cops for agreeing with that shit. He did what? Other guy's fired, by the no, way. No, 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 no. He did what? He let you do what? He said, what? oh, fuck you. I just, I got to watch it again. He just, he stops the guy. If you can flip it, flip it. <laughs> They're cheering him on. The cops are all like, there they go. 
And I just want to stress that guy driving the attack front loader almost certainly has lost his job. Probably. Because he wrecked that piece of equipment. Good, good job. You stopped him. You're fucking fired. You're mm. fired. You're a hero. And now we have to let you go. <laughs> You're a hero who's out of work. I, I just motherfucking fucking hell. Wow. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I mean, I see what you mean. Because the adult in you is going, oh, no. But inside, you're like, fuck him, fuck him up. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. <laughs> Got the, like, the theme to, to fucking Pacific Rim. da 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 In your fucking head. <laughs> it's a front loader. Shut up. Let me have this. All this needed was John Boyega. <laughs> Charlie Hunnam. Oh, so that, that, that. I mean, where is Charlie Hunnam right now anyway? He's not busy. Put a show out. But I thought he still does. It's, it's, it's always sunny. Huh? But isn't it always sunny? Not Charlie Day. Charlie Hunnam. Oh. <laughs> well, they have too many Charlies on that movie. Is it Hunnam even? Maybe I'm saying his name wrong. I don't even know. Anyway, so the first thing we learned this week is, okay, yes, it's an awesome idea, but actually, no, I've got nothing. It's an awesome idea. Do it. Even the cops won't stop you, apparently, if, if it's from just having front lower combat on a public street. Uh We've learned that uh, if you set your own building on fire because your tenants broke a washer and dryer, that's a lose-lose. You, 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 you've as played the, yourself. As the kids say, the math ain't mathin'. <laughs> We've learned that volunteer firefighter is not, there's not a lot of wiggle room in the term. It's not up for debate. I mean, technically, it does sound like you can just show up with a hose, but that's not actually how, not it, how works. it works. We learned that if you're dealing drugs, maybe pull yourself away a little bit from the, the Tony Montana stuff and, and the Scarface. Just it's not it's not good. It's just pull it back. Um, we have learned that uh, some days waiting for a package to arrive, <laughs> you might want it. To not show up. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. And finally, we've learned that out in the world tonight, in a tiny little monkey cell with tiny little monkey bars and tiny little monkey outfits with tiny little monkey numbers and a tiny little monkey mugshot, there are two monkey gang leaders under arrest. And one of them is giving the speech from Braveheart. <laughs> 